Well, let's talk about the accommodation of the eye that is the human eye uh, previously we had talked about the eye a lot the structure of the eye and the parts of the eye now what we want to talk about is the accommodation of the eye so like what is accommodation of the eye and um, we want to talk about the ways in which the eye uh, accommodates uh, things or the way it adjusts itself so hopefully by now like from the previous lesson we are able to note what we talk about in terms of the parts of the human eye we talked about a lot of parts last time the secular muscles the pupil we talked about the retina the fovea the blind spot the orbit conjunctiva squela choroid and the cone cells now so hopefully you are familiar with these things which we discussed last time so today we are talking about um the major topic is still the sensory organs in the nervous system so here we have reached the part of sensory organs like the eye, the brain, uh, the ear. Uh, these are the organs that we have we are discussing and studying. So we started studying the eye, and now we're talking about the accommodation of the eye as a sensory organ. And we'll go ahead and talk about the ear. So, accommodation of the eye, what is it? So when we say accommodation of the eye, we're talking about the ability to change the curvature of the lens. The ability to change the curvature of the lens. That is what we call accommodation so that light rays continue to be focused on the retina. So what is curvature? Curvature just talks about how shapey the, the shape of something, whether it's, it's kind of bent, it is curving like that, or is flat, uh, or, or kind of bends a little bit. So, that is what we call curvature. Every line has got uh, some curvature attached to it. So, curvature just talks about the cave, how something is caving. Uh, this line here is kind of uh, different from from this one here because this one caves more than this one so we see this one has got more curvature than the other so the ability to change the to shape to change the shape is what we call uh, curvature so accommodation is the ability also to change this uh, curvature of the lens so that uh, uh, light rays continue to be focused on the retina. Now, when discussing the human eye, we did talk about the use of the lens in the human eye. The human eye has got the uh, the lens, which is used to focus light. Like when you look uh, into human eye, human eye, you'll be able to see these uh, is a lens. Now that lens is used to focus light rays onto the retina if you remember the structure of the eye that we discussed so the lens has got the job of focusing light onto the retina now the shape of the lens does not remain constant it does change the shape of the lens does not remain constant it changes so the amount of focusing needed by the lens depends on the object you're looking at where it is positioned or the distance of the object being viewed so let's say if you are here uh, you are here and you want to view something which is uh, which is here and something which is uh, close to you the distance between you and that object will determine the shape of the lens 
of uh, so that the light rays coming from this object can be focused onto your retina so that you can be able to see properly what uh, the object you are looking at so the ability of changing the lens so that it accommodates the light rays onto the retina properly so that you can be able to see is what we call accommodation so light coming from a distance object will affect your lens differently as light come uh, from a very near object will affect your lens very differently so let us see how the effect uh, of distance how does it affect the the lens and how does the, the lens changes in reaction to the distance of the things we're seeing at so what we're going to do next we're going to see discuss that so let's talk about distance object something which is uh, very far away or on a what happens when you're looking at something which is uh, on a larger distance we have what we call the ciliary muscles now this is not a new word to you because we did talk about the ciliary muscles in the previous lesson if you want to know where they are located you can refer to the previous lesson in the ciliary muscles so the ciliary muscles relax giving them a large diameter okay which pulls the suspensory ligaments and in turn pulls on the lens so let's just look again at this uh, image so that we know what we are talking about so we're talking about the ciliary muscles which are these muscles here uh, around around the, uh, the the lens and this is a side view and uh, this is a front view here so we're talking about objects that are distant and if we can cut this uh, image into two if you see properly we can cut it there we can see this part talks about image which is on a distant object and this one is an image which is a nearby object how they are affected so we're going to cut this image into two and look at it differently from each angle so let's talk about the distant object so we have the ciliary muscles which are relaxing when you're looking at something very far away let's say you're walking on the road and then you see an object coming to you at uh, at some distance let's say 100 meters and you want to identify it so the ciliary muscles they relax which these muscles uh, these brown muscles here this here is your lens the one which uh, is directly in the in in the center of the eye this is the lens this here the side view this is the lens so you want to look at an object from a distance so the ciliary muscles are going to relax if they relax you have the suspensory ligaments these are called suspend this which looks like lines drawn out, uh, up and down or sideways these are called suspensory ligaments they are pulled together okay and then what happens to the lens if you look at the lens the lens is pulled uh, thin like it stretches if you look at this one from here to there like it is stretching so the lens uh, kind of in stretches like that is pulled so that the light which is coming from a, a, a distant uh, object can 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 be focused onto the retina very easily 
So that is what happened from distant object. The cerebral muscles relax. The suspensory ligaments are put together and the lens is pulled thin. Okay, so when you're looking at something from a longer distance, the lens will be pulled thin, meaning it will kind of extend. So if you want something to help you to remember, just know that the lens will uh, be pulled thin or to increase in length if you're looking something at a, uh, a distant object or at a larger uh, distance. So that is what happens when you're looking at objects. So however, not, not, not that there is no strain put on the eye simply because this is pulled, you don't feel anything, you don't feel any strain on you. So that is what we are looking at on the distance, a distant object or objects from a larger distance. The serial muscles are relaxed, there is no strain on the eye. Next we can discuss uh, objects which are nearby. What happens to the lens? Remember our objective here is looking at the lens and how it is put together by the, uh, the muscles that surround. There are two muscles we are looking at, the, the cerebral muscles, suspensory uh, ligaments and we also uh, talk about mainly those are the two the cerebral muscles and the suspensory ligaments. So for near objects, what happens? So we look at the cerebral muscles. Last time, we uh, previously we've said that they are relaxing and then the suspensory ligaments, they contract, pulling the... So for a near object, the cerebral muscles contract. So near object, the cerebral muscles contract, giving them a smaller diameter. This uh, removes the tension in the suspensory ligaments, uh, meaning uh, they are going to relax and stop pulling on the lens. The lens becomes thicker or more convex. Uh, it reduces in uh, kind of in, in length. So as the cerebral muscles are contracted, there is uh, contracted there is strain on the eye meaning if you're looking if you've observed looking at something pretty close uh, to your eye it can give you a slight headache for example reading a book very very close or looking at the microscope for a long time or a computer screen uh, being viewed very close to your eye can cause strain on you and might cause a headache if you are viewing or reading for too long so they will be strained on the eye so when you're looking at near objects the cerebral muscles contract and the lens becomes thicker so you can remember this as nct cerebral muscles contract as uh, the near object cerebral muscles contract lens becomes thicker so let's look at the uh, several muscles on near object. This was our, this is your eye and this is the lens. And these, we've said, these are ciliary muscles. They are contracting. And then if you've seen these uh, suspensory ligaments, they kind of become slack. They kind of become slack and the lens is allowed to kind of just grow bigger or bulge forming like a convex lens that is for objects which are very near to your eye so for object distance uh, distance object the ciliary muscles they relax okay that is D and then the lens is pulled thin or the lens becomes uh, thin or is pulled or let's just say P so we can say Dr. P so for distance ciliary muscles relax and the lens is pulled for 
near objects for near objects the lens is uh, the the serial muscles contract and the lens becomes thick so that is the difference so for help us remember you can say for distance object you can put up the uh, uh, acronym dr. P it says distance object the ciliary muscles relax and the lens is pulled uh, thin and then for near object NCT the serial muscles contract and the lens becomes thick right so that is about uh, accommodation of the human eye that is how things are accommodated how it adjusts itself the lens adjusts itself right so now we're going to talk about what about the issue of being short-sighted or long-sighted what causes someone to say they are short-sighted or